this video we're going to move on to the next kind of subsection of this topic uh, called wedges. So today really we're just going to introduce you or I'm just going to introduce you to some of the kind of basics of wedges and we're going to look at one or two easier questions and then on Wednesday we'll look at one or two of the trickier kind of higher level ones and then what I'll do is over the Easter I'll give you a couple of questions to do as well to kind of practice this but this is the last topic in um, pulleys and wedges. So a wedge is basically an object which is in that shape, like a door wedge to hold the door open. And in the questions you'll deal with, what we'll have is we'll have another object, which they usually call a particle on top of a wedge. And that particle, obviously, unless the friction is really, really high, will start to accelerate down the slope. And the questions would be, well, how long will it take the particle to get this distance or how far will the particle move in a time of four seconds or something like that. So um, the trickiest thing about this is kind of understanding the, the forces that are acting on the particle. By Newton's second law, F equals MA or A equals F over M. But if you actually read the definition of it, the force and the acceleration must be in the same direction or the acceleration takes place in the direction in which the force acts. So if we want to know how much this particle is accelerating down this plane, we need to get the force which is acting in the same direction. Because it's the force that's acting in the same direction or the component of, of the force that's acting in this direction that will cause it to accelerate in this direction. So let's say with this particle, there's no forces acting on it except for gravity. Well, gravity always acts straight down. So the force pulling it straight down will be m times g. It's mass times gravity. Now let's assume this angle here is, let's say, let's call it 30 degrees. It looks way bigger than 30 degrees, but let's call it that. What we need to do in order to find this acceleration is get the force that's in the same direction as the acceleration. So we need to split up this uh, gravity force or this gravitational force and what we usually do is we say well let's call this maybe the x plane or something and let's call this the y plane so we want to split this force this gravitational force into these two directions now when we do that we're splitting it into the force that's pulling the block down into the wedge or pulling the particle down into the wedge and the force that's parallel to the plane like this so really all we're doing is resolving vectors, just like the most basic ones where we had, say, 50 newtons and this angle here is 30 degrees. Well, we resolve that into its components. This one is 50 times sine of 30, and hopefully you remember how to do this, and this is 50 times cos of 30. So we're doing the same thing here, it's just at a tricky angle. One of the trickiest things people find is how to get angles from this. Well. If you look, if I draw an imaginary line here, that's parallel to the ground. And this green line, this vector here, is parallel to the, the slope. So that means that this angle here must be the same as this angle here. So this is 30 degrees. Now that's a 90 degree angle because it's a, we're splitting it, we're resolving it into the x and y plane, so it has to be. So this angle here will be 90 minus 30 as well. So that angle will be 60, which makes this angle 30 as well. So when we're resolving our vectors, we could use this 60 or we could use this 30. But generally what you do is you just look at the, the angle of the slope and it's equal to the top angle there. So if you, draw, if you try to resolve this then, this will be equal to mg cos 30. And you might need to pause the video and play around with this to see how you're getting this. And this vector here will be equal to mg sine 30. So the vector that's or the vector that's causing it to accelerate down the slope is going to be this one, because this vector is in the same direction as the acceleration. It doesn't look like it from here. Well, it does hopefully, but it's not exactly matched up. But we could draw that vector there as well, and say that vector is mg sine. 30. 
Now, if you wanted to know what the normal reaction force is on the particle, and this is getting a bit messy there, but the normal reaction force, because obviously the particle is pushing against the slope, the normal reaction force here is going to be equal to Rmg cos 30. And we might need that as well. So what I suggest you do is you pause the video, you redraw this out maybe, and you make sure you understand where all this comes from. And don't be afraid to ask me questions, but I'll do one example question which kind of uses these facts. So this is the 2008, oh, hang on, where's it gone? 2007, higher level question. I think I need changes to those. We might have enough room there. 2007, higher level question. We have a particle slides down a rough plane, and remember rough means that there's friction. Friction equals mu times r which is inclined at an angle of 45 degrees. So as always, draw your vector diagram nice and big. This is 45 degrees. Probably very, this is our particle. The only, the coefficient of friction between the particle and the plane is three over four. Find the time taken to descend four meters from rest. So if we're looking at the time taken to descend four meters from rest, we're gonna need to use our UVAST equations because it's going to accelerate down the slope. It's starting at rest. We want to know the time taken for it to travel or descend four meters. So in order to do that, we need to figure out A, what's its acceleration? And in order to figure out A, we use our other equation that we always use for acceleration, which is F equals MA. So in order to figure out A, we need to know its mass and we need to know the resultant force. So let's find out our forces. Well, there's only two forces acting on it. It's weight, gravitation force is straight down. And because it's accelerating down the plane, friction will go opposite to that, or friction will be opposing that. So friction here will be mu times r. Now, as I said, if, we, if it's accelerating in this direction, we need to get the forces in this direction. So we're going to have to resolve this weight force. So we draw our vector one perpendicular to the plane, one parallel. If this is 45 degrees, this will be 45 degrees. See the explanation above, which makes this mg sine of 45. And this is mg cos 45. So this mg sine of 45, we could redraw it up here. That's the forward force pulling it down, mg sine 45. Now to calculate friction, we need to know the normal reaction force. And as I said, the normal reaction force is gonna be in this direction, but it's gonna be equal to mg cos 45. Those two forces will be equal because the particle isn't moving in this direction. So our friction then is going to be 3 over 4 mg cos 45. So it's moving down the slope. We have two forces in that direction. We have mg sine 45 and our friction. Because it's moving down the slope, our downward force is going to be bigger. So when we're getting our resultant force, it's going to be mg sine of 45 minus 3 over 4 mg cos of 45. I need a little bit more room here. Equals its mass times acceleration. Now they never gave us the mass, but because we have m in all of these terms, we can cancel it. And we're left with g sine 45. Now you can put that into your calculator or you can use your formula tables and sine of 45 is exactly the same as cos of 45, which is equal to one over root two. So this would become g over root two minus three g over four root two equals a. Uh, if we want to add these fractions, we're going to need to make the denominator the same. So I'm going to multiply above and below this fraction by 4. So now we have 4 root 2 as the denominator in both. 
that gives us 4g over 4 root 2 minus 3g over 4 root 2, which is 1g over 4 root 2. And that's equal to a. So now we have our value of acceleration. Last part of the question was to use that a, which we figured out now is g over 4 root 2, um, to figure out the time taken, given that we know the distance. So for that, we can use s equals ut plus half at squared. s is 4 u is 0 times t um, plus a half g over 4 root 2 times t squared. That's going to go to 0. I'm going to be left with 4 equals g over 8 root 2 t squared. So t squared will equal 4 divided by or you could say 4 multiplied by 8 root 2 over g. So t will obviously be the square root of that. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get the right answer for t.